of you listened to a song in the last couple of days that was chosen for you by an app? How many of you have purchased something at the suggestion of a platform? How many of you have watched a funny YouTube video, maybe of an animal water skiing, because it was suggested for you? Okay. <laughs> Apps have gotten really smart. And how they've gotten very smart is using artificial intelligence. The technology under the hood uses multiple recursions and regressions to match a huge body of information to what your tastes are. That has enabled human beings to organize and use massive amounts of information. Today I'm here to talk a little bit about college. It's similar, there's a lot of information. Colleges are where society aggregates a lot of knowledge and extends the adolescence of our youth so that we can become informed citizens, become educated people, and gain economic success. What's interesting about college is that college is not necessarily what people think it is. There are over 15 million students in America attending colleges. About 49% of four-year institutions host students who actually have gone to a two-year institution. That 15 million is split about evenly between four-year and two-year institutions. 60% of college students actually change universities. And 40% of the students that change universities take along zero credits. College is not as accessible or as easy as people think it is. I'd like to share a few comments from our target audience. My parents so. were immigrants, and I was the first person in my family to go to college. I was one of the few kids in my neighborhood that actually completed a degree. I worked my way through college to get my degree. I took two years of credits at one university and found that virtually none of them transferred to the university. I ended up graduating from Wayne State. So I needed to pay for and retake the exact same classes that I had already taken before while working 25 hours a week, which made it harder. So I have five younger siblings and I'm the first in my family to go to college. Throughout my academic career, I had to juggle my work life, my school life, and my family life all the way to earning my degree. Non-traditional is the new traditional. 70% of students are working during college. A very significant fraction, 40%, work very significant jobs, uh, over 30 hours a week. 33% of college learners are the first in their family to get to go to college. That makes college harder, not easier. And 71% of college students graduate with significant debt, on average more than $35,000 a year. So why do all this? Because of this. If you look at the wage gap between degree earners, not just college attendees, but degree earners and people who do not earn a degree, it's grown over time. And it's very significant. Within a couple of years, you can probably earn enough in difference in pay to make up for the college debt. Again, a few more comments. Everyone who wants to go to college should have the opportunity to do so. College is a huge economic enabler and creates personal growth. But the support is not there. People need support and understanding to finish degrees. Amazon, Apple, and Google know a lot more about me than my college teachers did. Why can't we harness that customization for higher ed? Having to physically be present in class is a major restriction on the amount of time that you can spend working if you have to make some money while you're going to college. So there needs to be a way for these gen ed classes that transfer the most places to be offered online. College level material can totally be delivered online. I personally took tons and tons of online classes during my academic career. But when I think about the experience that I had taking online courses and I compare it to my everyday experience using platforms like Spotify, like Snapchat or Pinterest, there's just absolutely no comparison. These college level platforms, they absolutely, absolutely can and should be improved. We agree. Your other platforms know you, whether you're buying something, whether you're watching a video, whether you're listening to music. At Amosite, we believe that college can be made more engaging and effective using artificial intelligence and taking classes online in order to do that. Spotify uses AI to help you find music you love. Amazon uses AI so you can easily buy anything you need. YouTube uses AI to let you watch fun, sometimes useful videos. At Amosite, we're here to help you get your college degree. What matters now are partnerships. At Amosite, we believe that the right way to proceed on this problem is to partner with colleges and universities and bring the technology to courses so that we can take them online. The AI technology we're using uses user behavior to try to improve outcomes and levels of engagement. 
I'd like to introduce a few people on the team. <laughs> My name is Sixto Fernandez. I'm the administrative manager at Amicite, coordinating our headquarters right here in downtown Ann Arbor. My name is James Demery. I'm a software engineer at Amicite, working on technology that will deliver online education so people can take courses when they need them. My name is Kaylee Humbarger. I'm a platform analytics engineer at Amicite at work designing the world's first machine learning driven platform that engages learners. We're very excited about what we're doing at Amicite. I'd like to let John Vredenberg, who actually created this video, close for us. Thank you guys so much for coming out today. This is a fantastic event. I hope you're all excited to be here. Uh, if you would like to learn more about Amicite, please come see us at the PNC Bank at Maine and Huron. Thanks again.